Almost all physical processes involve a change in energy. Now, this is an extremely important idea that we'll be coming back to throughout physics. For example, a runner would need energy to move. So, as they gain speed, there is a change in energy causing this. Then, light bulbs need energy to illuminate. So, when a bulb lights up, there is a change in energy inside it. And when cooking, we need energy to heat up food. So when frying something, there is a change in energy in the food that cooks it. You won't be expected to recall these exact examples of energy changes, but throughout the course, you'll need to be comfortable identifying and explaining the energy changes in processes. So to do this, we'll need to understand that energy changes involve changing the way it's stored. Where an energy store is a form in which energy can be held by an object. So, what types of energy stores are there? Well, first, kinetic energy is the energy held by an object that is moving. So, for example, the faster a hair is moving, the more kinetic energy it has. As it slows down, this energy is transferred elsewhere. And once it stops, it no longer has kinetic energy. We'll be learning more about this with forces and motion. Next, gravitational potential energy is the energy gained by an object as it gains height. So, if we imagine a tree with an apple in it and an apple on the ground, then the apple in the tree is higher up. So this means it has more gravitational potential energy. Which we've abbreviated here as GPE. Normally, this energy will be transferred to kinetic energy as an object falls, which is what would have happened to the other apple. Then, elastic potential energy is the energy held by an object that has been stretched. We see this kind of energy in things like elastic bands. When the band is stretched. Elastic potential is being stored in it. Then, if we were to release the band, all this elastic potential would suddenly change to kinetic energy, that makes the band fly off. We'll learn more about this when we look at stretching objects in general. Another type of energy store is thermal energy. This is the energy held by an object that has been heated or worked on. This is a type of energy we associate with temperature. When heat is supplied to an object, which is a special way of transferring energy, then the object's temperature rises. Now the next two types are quite similar. First, electrostatic energy is the energy stored in an electrostatic field. Note that this is not the energy carried by an electric current. But rather a type of energy we associate with the forces from electrically charged objects, like protons and electrons. Then magnetic energy is the energy stored in a magnetic field. In other words, it's the type of energy we associate with the forces on magnetic objects. Since both charged objects and magnetic objects can experience attractive or repulsive forces. They can start moving from these forces, so we must be transferring some sort of energy to kinetic energy. This is similar to how objects can suddenly start falling because they have gravitational potential energy. Objects in an electrostatic field or a magnetic field can suddenly start moving as they have energy stored while in these fields. We'll be learning more about electric and magnetic fields elsewhere, so don't worry if these definitions seem a bit complicated right now. Next, chemical energy is the energy stored in chemical bonds between atoms. Now, this is something you'll learn more about in chemistry, but there is energy stored in chemical bonds that can be released through chemical reactions. This is the type of energy that will be stored in fuels. Batteries, food, and our bodies. And lastly, nuclear energy is the energy stored in the nucleus of an atom. This is different to the energy released during chemical reactions. 
as it is specifically the energy holding the protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. So this energy is released when a nucleus is split apart. You should be able to have a basic understanding of all of these stores for your exam, as well as identify which stores are involved in described energy transfers. But there might be a few types of energy you're aware of which aren't in this list. That's because energy can also take other forms when being transferred. So we've already mentioned electric currents, which are a way of transferring energy in circuits. But we don't really transfer energy to the current itself to store it. Other types of energy which aren't considered to be stores are sound waves, which transfer energy as vibrations in matter. So when we use a megaphone, it takes the chemical energy in a battery and sends it away as a wave which makes air particles vibrate. This energy is then transferred to objects that the wave comes in contact with. We can also have light waves, which transfer energy as radiation. So a torch would instead transfer the energy from a battery away as a light wave. Now these special types of waves carry energy to transfer in many different ways. We'll learn more about these waves and others elsewhere. Now you don't need to remember these non-stored types of energy, but they will be helpful when understanding energy transfers in general. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.